Good morning. It is Friday morning, February 1st, 2019, and it's time for your morning walk with me, Sophronia. I am not in New Haven today. I'm walking in my neighborhood, and that's because I've been away for a few days. I was in Holland, Michigan, in the polar vortex, uh, visiting Hope College. And, you know, when I come back, I've been away for a few days, and instead of hanging out in New Haven today, I wanted to just come home and be at home and take care of some things in my home office. I'm going to talk about journaling this morning because for me, sometimes journaling is a coming home. Uh, we talked about journaling in a couple of the classes uh, that I've visited lately and the importance of journaling for a creative writer. Now, I know that oftentimes we don't have time to do writing, period, just to write a story or to write an essay, and we wonder, well, how am I going to find time to journal? But it is important that you make time for it. I find, especially if you've been away from the desk for a little while, journaling helps me come back to my own voice. It also helps me to think about uh, what I'm writing. You know, what is the problem with what I'm working on? Or am I excited about it? And it's also a way to practice. You get to practice uh, what you sound like. You could practice, uh, it's, well, it's sort of like field notes on the world. You know, um, Thomas Jer Merton, the monk, Thomas Merton journaled extensively and there are times when I can tell that he's just observing, right? He wrote about the birds, the sound of the birds, and the quality of the sunlight in the little um, shed where he used to uh, write and read. Uh, you know, I'm probably going to go back in and journal about how cold it is this morning. But journaling is important because it gives you uh, work to look back on especially if you're writing memoir. Uh, you know, you, ca you get to capture moments that you don't know may be important to you, you know, 10, 15 years down the line. And even if you're writing fiction, your journal work could show up in your fiction. Now, how can that be? Well, if you look at uh, my novel, Unforgivable Love, there's a scene uh, where Aunt Rose expresses this sheer delight over seeing these butterflies, this massive number of butterflies lighting on her uh, lilac bushes. Well, where did that come from? I have lilac bushes and I saw that one day and I was just absolutely thrilled by it. And I ended up writing that down in my journal. You know, we are not conjuring things out of the blue when we are writing. You know, we are writing about emotions and things that actually exist. So you don't necessarily have to make it up, right? You already feel this. So take notes on it. You know, Charles Dickens, when he was trying to describe a, a facial expression, he would go to the mirror and he would make that face. <laughs> and then he would, you know, look at it really carefully. And then he'd go back and write about what he had seen. You know, journaling is really not that different. You know, we are taking notes on what we see in the world and then putting it to use in our creative writing, whether it be poetry, fiction, nonfiction. So you don't have to journal every day, right? And I think journaling has gotten that dear diary, you know, bad rap. But, you know, at least once a week maybe a couple of times a month. And it doesn't have to be elaborate. Maybe you're just gonna write a list. But do make it a habit to observe your world. Think of it as writing a letter to yourself, maybe a letter to your future self. And know that in one way or another, these words will find their way into something. It's not a waste of time. So enjoy your writing. I will see you next week.
and hopefully it'll be warmer. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.